Okay, what about traveling to another star system or even another galaxy? Have you ever thought about that? Wouldn't that be cool? Uh, it happens all the time in science fiction, but people that like hard science fiction will tell you, no, it's not even realistic for science fiction. We're not going to have faster than light travel. They quote Einstein as prohibiting it, and I'm going to I'm going to get on board with them. No, faster than light travel. Just good old Newtonian and relativistic travel. Could we travel to other stars? Well, one reason people say is because you'd have to leave the world behind. You, you know, if if you're like, you know, it's hundreds of years from the star. Even if you could get there, you'd be dead. Your next generation would go. What would be the point? You'd lose connection. Well, when the people went to Europe, I mean, granted, not everybody lost connection, but you, know, you could. Not everybody would lose connection in this case, too. The connection would just slow down. Believe me, they'd stay in contact. It might take 100 years even for a message to get through. But, you know, and, and when people went to America, they left their life behind. They couldn't communicate. What they did was, yeah, you're leaving all your family behind. Take some family with you. And they brought their immediate family, or people that had nothing to lose just went. And, um, so for this, assume one thing, one thing that is, that does have to be assumed here is that we have some good energy source that we can accelerate a spaceship um, to travel in the following way. You accelerate at 1G, um, halfway, half of your journey. Then you turn off your engines, you spin around, and you decelerate at 1G. And that's the assumption that I made. So if you do that, you get to relativistic speeds. It's going to be an amazing energy source, of course. That is science fiction. It's beyond what we have. But it's not theoretically inconceivable like uh, faster than light travel currently is. And by the way, wormholes, you know, uh, there's a good chance that going through a wormhole will erase the structure between all the elementary particles and all that will go through. It will be elementary particles. So let's just forget about wormholes. But you do get to relativistic speeds. And so if you went 20 light years and you traveled this way, I have a little online calculator here, it would only take 21.85 years to get there. To get there, check it out and come back. So in, in the, and that would take 40 years, so you were there a year, then it would take 41 years. You know, 20 to get there, uh, no, no. Okay, for you, it would take, okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. You could go there and come back in, in two times 22 years. So in 44 years, you'd get back, say, 45 years if you stay there for a while. Um, well, yeah, people would want to do that. We'd wait 50 years for something like that. That would be pretty interesting. But here's where it gets cool. The time for you on board is not 21 years or even 20 years because when you go relativistic speeds, and here we're kind of assuming the stars are at rest to one another, or at least not relativistic speeds, when you go near the speed of light relative to these two stars, the distance between them, for you, appears to shrink. So you don't actually have 20 light years to go. You end up with less. And according to this calculator, this reliable calculator, I'll put a link up, it, um, it would only be six years on the ship. So you'd go 20 years for six years. So it would be 12 years plus a year you stayed extra. So. 13 years and you would come back and have accomplished 50 years of research on Earth. But it gets even better from there. Let's say we go to something, one of these 100 light year destinations and with the same technique. Okay, then it takes 102 years from Earth's point of view for us to get there, granted. But on board it only takes 9 years because it just really gets better and better. The longer you can do this thing, the closer you get to the speed of light, and it's just amazing how much your time slows down compared to everybody else. So let's do 500 light years. There's a lot of Earth-like planets 500 light years away. There's a lot 50 light years away. You could go to Rigel and a lot of these stars that are sun-like that would be interesting to go to. If you consider what I was saying before about imaging, which ones seem to have life on them, you know, we'll be able to see which ones have planets that are Earth-like, if there are any. So a 500 year, 500 light year journey, of course, takes 502 uh, years Earth time, but on board only 12 years, only twice as much as the 20 light year journey. Only twice as much as the 20 light year journey. 
And would you do that? Would you take 25 years of your life to go to another star and come back and be a thousand years in our future? Okay. Um, now, of course, would there even be a culture here? Well, yeah, there was a thousand years ago. There probably will be a thousand years in the future. We're not quite stable. Maybe we'll be a little more stable when we discover this uh, energy source we would need. But um, I imagine people would do that because it could be done in one lifetime. 25 years plus be there, 5 years, 30 years. 30 of your years, you could be 20 and come back at 50 and get this. The power of compound interest. I thought it would be fun to go look at the compound interest calculator. If you put $100 in an account with a thousand years to grow, obviously you have to be a special account. Currencies come and go. If the account, if the currency of the account went away, you'd have to put it into some asset and then back into money into the new currency if the bank went out of business and so forth. So yeah, you'd want to have a pretty stable society. But if you did it at a 2.5 interest rate, I thought that'd be fair. You can get three and a half, four percent, no problem, so why not, why not just get 2.5 percent, you could probably get that, that's a pretty good deal for whoever's loaning the money, um, that ends up being, let's see, that's thousands, millions, five trillion dollars off of your hundred dollar investment, investment, five point three trillion dollars, now, the Inflation I'll get you. So I, I looked up the inflation. Well, in the last 200 years, inflation's gone up 20 times according to the consumer price index way of calculating it. Even more if you calculate it other ways. But anyway, we'll use that one. So over a thousand years, if it's going to go 20 times every, uh, every 200, then that's 20 to the fifth, which is 3.2 million times inflation. Uh, 3.2, so like 300, uh, or no, 320 million percent or something like that. So that'll really kill you. So that trillion uh, in the new money, in, in the money, the hundred dollar era where you put in the money, that would only be 1.6 million. Well, that's pretty good. You come back at 15, you get what's the equivalent of now, 1.6 million. And of course, you can really play with this. Um, it's not so much how much you put in, it's that interest it gets you. So if you give somebody 3% interest, they, they get a lot more. If you start with $1,000 and give them 3% interest, they could come back with 20. If you give them $1,000, uh, at that thousand year thing, it comes back more like 16 million adjusted. Yeah, I think people would do that. Now, what if they came back and the people weren't waiting for them? Well, I think the people that were here would be pretty interested if they had forgotten that they had sent humans to the stars and then the humans come back. They would probably have a decent chance at a good welcome. I think, I think we will go to the stars and look at this. Now, here's another thing. Other galaxies, those are totally out of reach, right? Andromeda is three million light years away. Three million light years away. 3 million light years away. 3 million light years away. That's a close one, too. So they get further than that. But look at what relativity does for 3 million light years. Okay, I gotta be careful. 3, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, Calculate with your 1G acceleration. Well, it takes 3 million and 2 years, pretty much, to go that far on Earth time. A lot of things would change. But on the ship, only 28.96 years. So in a single lifetime, somebody, if a ship could, you know, be sustainable enough for that, in a single lifetime, somebody could make it to Andromeda. Now, we wouldn't know where to go because we couldn't see which stars. Uh, but if we had good enough telescopes once we got there, maybe we have a way to focus them in and and find out where we went once we got there because with this relativistic uh, system you can get all over the universe in a single human lifetime now it's more than a human lifetime out of it I mean if that person comes back so they make a round trip to Andromeda and back 60 years for them 6 million and 4 years for the people 